Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Oh, it's run it back. <laughs> run it up. Come on. Run it, it is Wednesday. Uh, welcome to Run It Back. We are. Lou has just done that thing where you make the turn and you yeah. like the music. How's it feel? I, I'm digging it. No, it's happening. I'm digging it's it. It's happening. Uh, Michelle Beadle, Chandler Parsons, Lou Williams, of course, Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider, is joining us as well from his palace in the Midwest. Uh, guys, what a game. There were only three of them last night, but one of them was an instant classic for some of us. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Spurs stunning the Phoenix Suns. That's the that's the one time I feel comfortable saying it. It's a late second basket, 115, 114. At some point, Phoenix led by 20. Hey. Uh, hey. Oh Whippy finished with 18 and 8. Keldon Johnson with 27 points. And Durant, I mean, this is the moment right here. That's just stunned and shock and what is happening. It's a crazy sequence of events. You saw it right there. He has the ball stolen. Keldon Johnson with the last second bucket. Um, was he fouled? Should they have called a timeout? It felt like time stood still for a second. Um, yeah, on the replay, I didn't see the foul, but mm -mm. you see kind of Trey Jones kind of grab his arm after, almost like apologizing for fouling him. He must have got him in the eye or something, but this was nuts. I turned this game off and then happened to get the notification that it was a close game. But look, if you see right here... I'll, it looked like he was anticipating the foul, It right? looked like he was yeah. expecting the foul. Honestly, Vogel, I would have loved if he would have just burned a timeout right here when he sees the double coming. You yeah. have one, waste yeah, it. no foul. Redo it. I don't see a foul It's there. like he just took it. it. I, think it I think it was just anticipation. Usually Usually a lot of guys take that foul quick, especially under 10 seconds. He probably was expecting something to happen, and they just didn't do it. And coaches, sometimes they'll tell you, they'll say they're expecting a foul. Literally, do not foul. Go for the ball. First, and, yeah. and literally, at least try and get a jump ball. And I think that's what KD was doing here. But I got to say, Michelle, these Spurs, mm -hmm. they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. They remind me of Oklahoma City the last couple years, where they have this young talent. They have those four guys, Vassell, Johnson, Sohan, and obviously Wimby. I really, really like. They play hard. They play the right way. Way. They're one piece, two pieces away when I can't help but think of these Siakams, these Levines, these DeMar DeRozans, but coming back to San Antonio, someone like that that can kind of carry the load like an SGA does for the Thunder. I love them. I think this potential is through the roof, sky's the limit. They're obviously well coached, they play hard. I love everything they're doing. And, Whoa. And on the flip side, the <laughs> Suns, man, you call a timeout right there, you get the ball in, you're three and one, you feel a lot better than you do today. But this was a huge win, and every 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 game is a growing opportunity for the Spurs, and this one was huge. You go and in. And if I'm, I'm sorry, huge. cut you off. You if, if I'm Frank Vogel and I got the ball in Kevin Durant's hands, I feel comfortable right there to not call a timeout. So um, it's just one of those things. It, it, Rarely do we ever see a team actually get a steal in that, in that situation, and it happened. But, um, Michelle, you win. The Spurs are what? fairly entertaining. <laughs> Yay! They are fairly entertaining. I have a lot to do with it. Uh... And the Vassell, Vassell I, I got the contract. I was yep. like, damn, that's a lot of money. Shout okay. out to Vassell. He's he from can the neighborhood. Yeah, he can play. He can do it all. I think people just weren't familiar with his game. Yeah, it's, I mean, I wasn't for sure, but he can play. He's tough. He can score. He can defend. I, I love his game. And let's show some love to Keldon Johnson as well. I mean, the head, it, do we think it's the headband? Because that's a new thing. It might be the headband. That might be what's happening. And of course, there's a giant seven foot four-ish man that happens to be the difference in a lot of this. He hit a jumper. He played solid D. Um, offensive rebound. He's all over the place. He doesn't seem rattled. Even after the game, when Charles Barkley's trying to get him to talk about churros. He's like just very calm. What have you seen from him, Lou, in the first week? Um, it's advertised. Um, he's competing at a high level, and that's the only thing you can really ask for from a number one pick. Um, and a rookie just to compete at a high level. Those guys were down big last night, down 20, and to walk that down um, against Kevin Durant, you know, everybody's His gonna- His idol. Which... Yes, everybody is gonna say something about that. Big win for those guys, and, and it's no secret that the Spurs are, are a class act organization. Pop is one of the best coaches that he can possibly be around to be um, in the beginning stages of his career. So, uh, very impressed with his poise <laughs> and how he's playing. Yeah, he doesn't get rattled. He's fearless. This was just ridiculous. What he did. I don't even know how he did that. But <laughs> also on this player here, classic KD. KD's got to box out. I mean, this is box out 101. You box out, you get the rebound again. This game's on ice. The Suns are three and one, and they feel a lot better than they do today. But Wimby, he, he can do it all. We're going to talk about him throughout the season. But like Lou said, he doesn't get rattled. He's poised. He doesn't force bad shots. He takes what the defense gives him. He's he's going to have up and down games. He's going to have horrible games. It's all part of his progression. But man, when you see him last night, just kind of come off that inbounds play, knock down a jumper down at the end of the game, 
then to have the, just even the mindset of crashing the glass there and getting the dunk tip, they don't win this game last night without him. No. Those are huge plays from a 19-year-old rookie. It's official. He's a, he's a real deal, right? Poof, he is the real deal. It's happening. And he's only going to get better. I hope, he just, I hope he stays healthy. I, the, oh, look, I'm a Spurs fan, and when they were down by 20, I, I remember going, they're going to have a lot of games like this. You know, they just lost to the Clippers mm -hmm. by a bunch. I thought, okay, this, this is how it's going to work. It's fine. It is what it is. And then this thing happens. There was a moment when KD had a dunk, and it was like, oh, that was something. And then Wemby just almost returned the favor immediately. I want to show it right now because, you know, it's fun and it's pretty. This, this is, <laughs> oh my, oh with my the gosh. left. Mm. And Drew Eubanks on the other side has Bounce. Look, even Shams. Yeah. Shams, you all right, Shams? That was nasty. <laughs> yeah, this that was, was nasty. nasty. I mean, th there were like three plays, though. It was like KD's yeah. jumper from the corner over Wemby. KD had a sick dunk, and then Wemby has this dunk. And then Wemby had like two blocks, like that he's like literally reaching his arm out. He's he's like five feet away from the guy, and he blocks shot. Only he can block. Like I think Grace now in the first half <laughs> had KD on the swing open, but Grace now decides to shoot. And, and it wasn't even close. Uh, you know, he, Wemby blocked it pretty easy. And plays like that, there's a, I mean, um, I can count on my hand, guys that can do that, that can get, go off the dribble like that, two feet, jump from that far. It's just, that is just God-given talent. And he just keeps amazing us with different plays. And it's not just offense. Like Sean said, it's defense. It's coming weak side, blocking shots. It's staying in front of a guard. He truly can do it all. And to be that versatile at that size, it's unbelievable. It's it's going to be fun. Uh, I don't want to forget about Phoenix Suns here because they were without, obviously, two of their best players. Bradley Beal hasn't played a game yet. Devin Booker out for the third straight game. Uh, Shams, what's the deal? When when can we expect to see these guys? I know they play again tomorrow, Spurs Suns. When are they coming back? Yeah, the rematch. I, I think my sense is Devin Booker is closer along in the return process from his ankle injury than, than Bradley Beal is with the back. Uh, the Suns are looking at maybe Thursday in, in that game against the Spurs um, or Saturday at the 76ers, potentially for Devin Booker to make a return. Brad Beal is more of a you know day-to-day -day thing, a guy that he has to keep ramping up with. Backs are a little bit more tricky than just an ankle. You feel like if you if you rehab an ankle, you can heal an ankle quicker, a foot ankle. Uh, you know, is, is quicker, a little bit easier than a back. Uh, you know, with any given day, you could have a different sensation. But I think I think the Suns are optimistic that if there's no setback with Brad Beal's back, possibly over the next week or so, they do play in Chicago in a week uh, on, on the 8th. Uh, and, and maybe that could be a game that you have all three back and, and see if Brad Beal can make his return for. But Booker seems to be closer along than Brad Beal so far. So, I mean, look, it's not a bad thing, right? At times during the season, people are going to be out. It gives everybody else a little bit more time. Maybe they build some confidence. How big is that for the role players now? Oh, it's huge. You look at guys like Grayson Allen, who's new to this system, who's getting reps that he normally wouldn't get if a Devin Booker or Bradley Beal were in the lineup. Uh, Yuta Wanatabi, Eric Gordon. goes on the list. Nasir Little played 17 minutes last night. These are opportunities that these kids aren't going to have throughout the season. So I love that they're getting the experience. It's going to help them later down the stretch in the postseason moving forward. You know guys are going to be in and out of the lineup all season long. But this isn't the Suns team. This is the, We want to see them at full strength. Yeah. We want to see how they use Devin Booker and Bradley Beal together. Who's going to play point guard? Who's going to get the ball at the end of the game? That's all stuff that we're still waiting to see. And the fact that they could have been 3-1 and one right now without that would have been amazing. Again, they're one box out away, and they're sitting pretty. Instead, they're 2-2, two and two, and now they're watching film today, and it's a little negative vibes there. Negative vibes. Bad vibes today. You mm -hmm. think so? For sure. Are you? Are, do you have any concerns? I mean, when they're all back, they're fine. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't see anything alarming. Um, it's just details. Like you said, they're one box out away from being three and one, and that changes this entire conversation. And the same thing when you're in the locker room, you almost won a game. From losing the game, it changes everything and how everybody feels in that locker room. And there's different type of losses, right? This loss, they Oof. feel like yeah, they got away. That one's, this that one, was this one stings, this one, right? Like yeah. you're pissed off, you're pissed off going today, and then you're watching film, and there's stuff that you can't hide that we're going to see on this film that's just brutal. So this is a team that you should be. It's a young team has no business being on the floor with you, and they somehow <laughs> steal the game from you. So this one hurts. I don't know the last time I saw one actually stolen in the final second. This like was that. stolen. That was dramatic. This was stolen. I literally, this game was a blowout. I went to the Clippers uh, Orlando game. That game was a blowout, and then I got the notifications. The only reason I even came back, I thought this game was over. Thank goodness for notifications. Right. You missed the whole thing. <laughs> we had a uh, we had a playoff rematch on the East Coast. Little Knicks Cavs action. Uh, yeah. Knicks, no issues here. They dominated 109-91.
Julius Randle finished with 19 and 10. Brunson with 19. Mitchell had 26 in this one. Um, you know, I like when this sort of happens. It feels like one team has another team's number. Does it feel like that for you guys with the Knicks and Cavs? I mean, it looks like it. Um, four straight wins by, by 14 plus points. Um, I think it's just a matchup problem. And the Knicks know that and they play to those advantages. Yeah, obviously last year with the Cavs having the home court advantage, them, you know, having the early exit to the Knicks, this is kind of becoming some sort of rivalry where it feels <laughs> like the big brother and you just can't beat him, right? But let's not get it twisted. This isn't the Cleveland Cavaliers team either. They're missing Jared Allen. They're missing Karis LeVert. They're missing Darius Garland. They've got Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome. They are not their full team right now. So on that aspect of it, I'm not worried. I don't feel bad. This is, again, they're, I think they're one in three now. It's not the start they want after getting home court advantage last year, but... I love the Cavs. This is a team that is young. They're growing together. They're getting that, that valuable experience last year in the playoffs, I think is going to pay off. And once they fully get healthy, I fully expect them to kind of make a run and kind of get up in that up, upper echelon of the Eastern Conference. Oh, is that right? You like that? Well, I guess we'll fight about that at some point later on in the season. <laughs> is there, do you guys remember a team in your careers that you just, even though you were on the better team, you just couldn't get rid of them? Dallas for me. Really? Dallas late in my career. We couldn't, we couldn't, Luca just had our number. <laughs> he, he always played well against so, us. I thought you meant when I was. Um, <laughs> Eastern Conference wise, Awkward. I think it took me about <laughs> five years to get a win in Detroit. Detroit. See, that's, that's a, a good that's one. That's a different yeah. one. It All took right. me about five years to get a, get a win in Detroit. So. See, I don't know if it was, I had players. Like I had Rudy Gay, Wilson Chandler, and Danny Granger. Anytime I lined up again, those guys are good. They were scorers. Quick 30 on Parsons, easily. They just, they have my number. I would call switch. It's just I would those call three? help. Those three guys huh. would cook me every single time. As far as teams, the Spurs always used to give us trouble, but they were really good. They gave everybody trouble. Wait, right? when you were with? Kind of all over. Okay, when I was with the Rockets, enough. when I was with Dallas, they were, those were kind of the in-state rival, but they were so good. Yeah, it's a good time. It's more arenas than teams. Yes. Yeah, really? It's, yeah, like some arenas, you just it's just a hard place to win. So what does that do to you mentally when you're going, you're like, okay, we have a road trip, we're going to this arena, we never win here. What, does it change anything? Do you think this is the time that we're going to change no, it? it makes you play harder because you okay. want to you want to get it over with. You know what I'm saying? You want to get over that hump of constantly getting your butt whipped whenever you come into town. And so it just makes you play harder. <laughs> He's got a good with arenas. After Damian Lillard hit that game winner on me in Portland, I hated going there. It was like <laughs> I was uncomfortable. It gave me the heebie-jeebies every time I'd walk in that arena just because something so bad happened to me. And Traumatic. That, <laughs> and that place, again, he knows certain places are just rock. Like OKC in the playoffs is rocking. Rockin'. Yes, Boston, sir. Portland, these places are insane during the playoffs. There's a whole different like element of like atmosphere. The garden in the playoffs. Mm, oh, that's a good one. Amazing. Yeah. It should always be like that, I think. Um, people are, it's, a, it's already starting. The speculation about Donovan Mitchell asking for a trade before this season <laughs> is even over is it's up, it's kicking. Stop. Um, is this, I don't know if it's coming from Knicks fans, I don't know if it's coming from his specific fans, but wh what do you make of can any we, of that? Can we stop like the trade we culture? Can't. When we can't. Any we can't of... wait for the deadline. Just as soon as it's over let's with, do we it can now. just talk about basketball and <laughs> right, existing man. teams. No. Anytime a star player hits some adversity, the fans, the media, everybody's talking about trade. Well, trade, in our defense, trade. Lou, it does happen. Like it does well, seem to happen. Just, somebody has to lose. Fair. <laughs> Only one team can win. Somebody has also to. Wise. Somebody has to lose. I think we're just getting into a, a we're getting into a soft culture of guys. Just as soon as they hit a little hit a little bump in the road, um, we're on to the next thing. And let's see what else is out there, man. Look, take your lumps and get better. And that's not that's not a shot at at um, Donovan Mitchell. You know, I'm just in in general. J that just becomes the narrative every time that something is not going away for a team or a player. It is true. Like, and we don't even know if Donovan Mitchell's is asking for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming he doesn't. He's got a great team that he's going to grow with, with guys like Mobley and Garland. These guys are all, I think it's a perfect situation. You just said it. They're not healthy. Yeah, it's, they're it's not, not healthy. Not even this isn't a team. It's not even a team. But it is true. It's like any time you hit some sort of adversity, and especially now even in college basketball with this transfer rule, I can commit to Florida, no. not like it. Coach doesn't like me, transfer to Duke. Duke, ah, then I didn't, I got recruited over. I can, there's no accountability anymore. And now when you have a star player like this, you can just ask for a trade when the when you don't like the coach or you don't like the offense or you're not good vibing with this player. So there is a level of concern where you can just ask out now or you can demand a trade. Yeah. So that is difficult, but with the Cavs, I don't think so. I think J.B. Bickerstaff is one of the best coaches in the league. They have a coach, J.J. Outlaw, who's great with developing these guys. And you can see these guards, they keep getting better every single year. Why on earth would he want to go out besides living in Cleveland? <laughs> and there it is. I, was, I just wanted to see if he threw that one in there at the end. Um, well done. 
Look, it's always going to follow him because it was, is he going to be a Nick? Is, he's going to be a Nick, and then he wasn't. And they could have got him last year. Exactly. They didn't want to put Quentin Grimes in the trade. But here we are, Shams, and you're the guy with all the back stage information what what's the what's the deal should we stop talking about this or is there legitimacy to it the the only reason this is a topic is because Donovan Mitchell didn't extend his contract he was also for a three-year 145 million dollar extension he he decided not to do it and I think a lot of that is just business sense right next summer he's eligible for a four-year 200 million plus contract extension in the offseason and so he's that will be the truest test for Donovan Mitchell for the Cavaliers I think the cap, they want to get a second postseason in with Donovan Mitchell, like Chandler just spoke about. Like they, they have multiple guys right now out of the lineup. Darius Garland, Jared Allen, Karis LeVert. You want to get your, your team healthy. You want to see how you can build. You want to see how, like, like Lou said, when guys have lumps, when teams have, have adversity, you want to build through that. And we haven't even seen this team have two playoff runs in with this group together. So I think right now, Donovan Mitchell is only focused on the season, only focused on winning. He he had a team uh, <clears throat> mini camp that he organized before training camp even started, weeks before training camp started in his hometown in, in Connecticut. And it was a week long mini camp for the entire roster. Like that's not a guy to me that is just one foot in, one foot out. I think Donovan Mitchell, is fully invested, Mini and then the Cavaliers <laughs> don't <laughs> trade him. You know Cleveland's we we're, we're, you know bad if you're going to Connecticut. We got geography, <laughs> slander going on. Well, Just to, well, to be fair, he was celebrating his birthday. Miami, yeah, 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 Miami, yeah, LA, the Hamptons, Connecticut. San Diego. Connecticut's very close to New York, though, Sean. See if we can keep the conspiracy Come theories on. Come on, Basically, they're saying anywhere besides Cleveland. Come on, d Mitch, you got to do better than that. All right, my bad, Charles. One day we're just going to do an hour of cities we hate, and it's going to be good television. I, I promise that. you that. Shannon will lead that show, for sure. <laughs> no yeah, problem, of course you, will. you can call in sick that day. <laughs> I got it. Uh, okay, there was a uh, another West Coast game last night. The Orlando Magic, I mean, they've been in L.A. for like three weeks now, it feels like, but they it didn't matter. They got crushed. Uh, Harden was in the building. This one finished with 118-102 score. Paul George, 27-7-7. I mean, it's Russell Westbrook, 18-6-7. Man, Bancaro, so close to mine. 15 points, four rebounds, four assists, four steals. That's fun. Uh, Shams, Clippers are playing some pretty decent basketball right now. So, you know, the selling point to bring Harden in exactly was what? It's to be their point guard, and that's why they've targeted him. They needed a point guard for the last several years. They went after guys like Kyle Lowry, Malcolm Brogdon. They've, they've over the years, they've targeted finding a point guard to put next to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, and they really believe if you have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George healthy, with James Harden at the one, that this team can win a championship. And so they've already been speaking. I'm told James Harden has had conversations with, with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Russell Westbrook. We, we know there was video out about, about those two. T. Lou, they're, they're going to find ways to play with each other. They've been trying to find this type of ball handler. And James Harden is going into this where he's likely looking at being the third best player, right? When you have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they've been there since 2019. It's really their franchise. So any given night, he could also be number one. He could be number two. But He's going in this trying to facilitate, trying to make their lives easier. Um, and and I, will, I will also say, like, throughout this whole process, James Harden is, is sitting pretty. He got to the exact destination he wanted to get to. He didn't lose a single dollar, a single penny from his entire protest or whatever that was in Philadelphia. And so now he's going into this. I think winning has to be the only thing on his mind. And he gives them the, the pure point guard, I think, that they've wanted. Master lesson. He crushed it. I'll say this, the only pressure he has now, too, is we're all talking about it. the Clippers look so good now, right? Like, it's, yeah. er, it's early, they're only 2-1, and one, but this kind of has the built-in excuse now. If it does go south, uh, it's on him. It's on him. Why did we make this trade? We were going good. Russ is being Russ again. Paul George, I'll tell you, Paul George last night was really the first time I really watched him, like, get in his Indiana Pacer bag. Like, he's, he's back healthy. Man, he, he looks, looks yeah. he looks like the Paul George of... of back in the day where hmm. he's in shape, he's physical, he's bouncy, he's getting to a step back off the dribble. He looks unbelievable. So if I'm the Clippers, yeah, I don't want to do anything that's going to disrupt that. This offense looks great. You're getting contributions from everybody. You see Plumlee was in double digits. Norman Powell's come off the bench with 17. Bones Highland looked good. So you're getting contributions. You have a balanced offense. You have a balanced attack. Wow. 
why switch anything? So that's the only confusion for me. But also, listen, James Harden is James Harden. He's a great playmaker. He's a great scorer. He's used to playing <laughs> with other guys. He's used, he just played with Joel Embiid, who was the MVP. So he knows how to play with good players. He knows how to facilitate and get guys in their spots. And he knows how to score when he needs to go score. So hopefully it's a good fit, and hopefully it works out. It's just the timing of it's a little interesting when you see the Clippers playing so well right now. Yeah, there's so, so few games uh, into the season already, but we saw some rust there. He's been looking like he's having a blast. <clears throat> we don't know yet what the game plan is. I think all of us are just assuming he's going to come off the bench. So, Lou, I, I don't think so. I, so, yeah, you don't think so. All right. No, I, I, don't, Let's do I, it. Don't, I don't think he should. I don't think he should. Why should he be the odd man? I, out? I agree with you, but then who? It's him. It's. <laughs> 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 well, do we know? Do we know when he's playing? Like, do him. we know when James I mean, comes? Probably tonight. Yeah, we're talking right. about it, next. It should be tonight. Um, who do they play? I think Lakers the road tonight, trip. Right? I think Lakers tonight, but I think it's road trip. I think he waits till then. Look. I think it's my guess. Well, Shams will know more. We're just guessing. Why do we ask Shams? <laughs> we we got the guy that knows. Yeah. We're over no, here. we're just gonna <laughs> guess first and then come back. So, what, 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 if not? All kidding aside, if it's not him, if it's not Westbrook coming off the bench, then what? What do you do? I don't know. I, I really don't have the answer to that. I don't think he should come off the bench. I think he's off to a great start. This team is off to a great start. Look, you, you're going to insert James Harden into that lineup and take Robert Covington's place, um, mm. and you don't disrupt anything, mm. I feel like. You know, Robert, Robert hadn't been playing. You could say it. Zero right. points or so. Uh, yeah, yeah you might just, just wasn't getting it done. Fair enough. And so if, if you insert James Harden into that spot, I don't think you make a lot of adjustments. I think it works on paper with James because Paul George and Kawhi Leonard both play defense, right? And they're both mm. capable of guarding the other offensive player. And it works with Russ because he can, again, spearhead that second unit, him, Norman Powell. You're still going to have one of those three guys, James, Paul, or Kawhi, in that rotation, too, with the second string. And who knows? It's, it's got to – whoever it is, they just have to accept it. And it's, we're truly going to see if they're about winning because if this, if this is what Tyron Lue and the Clippers think is the best chance to win them a championship, then they got to buy in and do it. But it's going to hurt. And if I'm Russ, I'm going to be annoyed if it's me. If I'm James, I don't think he's going to do it. So I think it's going to – I mean, they're both no former MVPs. Why are we only yeah, saying Russ? I then? agree. Wait, is well, it a conversation? Because, like, we, we saw all this with Chris Paul and Steve Kerr in the offseason. Is it an actual conversation where they bring you in? It's like man to man. Like this is what we're thinking about doing. Or is it as simple as you show up for the game? That's and a conversation. On the coach? That's it's a conversation with Russ. That's a conversation. And look, I don't. It's got to be right. They could also go all four of them with the big fella. Like, I think that's, I could, the, I that's think also that's the way possible. They go. I for, if you don't listen, want to ruffle any feathers. Fact, that's how they're gonna. The first game off. that they played together. I like this. It will be. Because you can put Kawhi or PG at the four. Yeah. Like, I like that. So I really want that. Yes, we're also in the sports entertainment business. All four of them will be in the star. You want to keep the all them happy? Time. That's the James easiest. That's the and let it not work. Then you can have that conversation with somebody. Right. Hey, we're gonna change. Let them lose two, three in a row. Then you can kind of go down that that alley. Well, but, we're not. It's not. We're not being dramatic. Like all eyes were on those two guys specifically last night pregame. James Harden shows up with P.J. Tucker, Lawrence Frank, Steve Ballmer. They're all there to greet him. And then we haven't even talked like, about P.J. Tucker. I know we haven't. I, I feel kind of bad, but this is the you know this is the big meeting. Well, he's so happy to see his guy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and me and Lou talked about this before. We think that James saw Terrence Mann before yeah, this they, interaction. Yeah, I think they definitely spoke before. I mean, Norman oh. Powell's sitting right there as well. He's not getting up. So I, I think he had already had his greetings with him. And no matter guys. who yeah. it is, you're going to get up, you're going to say what up, you're going to hug. But no, no doubt he saw him in the training room or on the court or somewhere. This is not the first time. Not that the video time. going yeah. viral, it's like. I think the only reason we have a video is because that's the first time he saw Russ. Yeah. yeah. And we love drama. I don't know what uh, we thought we was going to happen. Like, fighting. I, I have no idea. <laughs> 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 So happy yeah. to see you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we've made our guesses. Um, and then we will actually go to Shams to find out when James Harden might actually play for the Clippers. Run it, we'll run it back for turns. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Beep, 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 beep. Well, Shams, you heard our very educated takes uh, of when we think James Harden may or may not show up in a Clippers uniform. Are we going to see him tonight against the Lakers? James Harden will not be playing tonight. Mm. Uh, I'm told the plan is for him to get practice over the next few days, get some, some reps in with the team. And then the target is as soon as Monday's game at the Garden mm. against the Knicks. I think that's the, the likeliest possibility, the, 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 you know, the soonest that he could make 
his debut for the Clippers, along with Kawhi Leonard, along with Paul George. So the plan is to get him ramped up. I think he has been working out individually. He's been doing a lot on his own, away from the Sixers for the last several weeks. We know he's only gone through one five-on-five scrimmage in the last month, and that came out all the way on October 7th. So there's still time over the next few days for him to get some competitive runs in, whether that's two-on-two, three-on-three, before possibly debuting uh, Monday uh, on their road trip. Well, that's a nice, quiet place, Madison Square <laughs> Garden, to make your debut after a long, weird off-season. Um, do we like that? That's a good plan. I mean, yeah, there's no bigger place, there's no greater stage than <laughs> MSG, so it makes perfect sense. Um, and I can't wait. Again, we, we talked about it, but I just can't wait to see the rotations. I can't wait to see the starting lineup. I can't wait to see everything that goes in. Same with the Suns. When they are fully loaded, this team can be very, very dangerous. And again, yeah. it could it could, it could, could pan out like the Mavs last year when the big trade with Kyrie and it just was a dumpster fire. That could also happen. So who knows? We have no idea. But it's definitely exciting. It's drama. And why not make your, make your debut at MSG? I would have loved to have seen it tonight, though. Yeah, me too. I know. I would have yeah. liked to just be done with it and see it. What, I don't even know. Like, if I knew the answer to this, I'd be very, very wealthy. But if you could predict James Harden's long-term future here, what are you going with? Yeah, I, th- I think what's interesting here, Michelle, a couple of years ago when the, when the Sixers traded for James Harden, they gave up multiple picks. I, I believe it was two first-round picks, a second-round pick. We know they also gave up Ben Simmons to go get James Harden, and they did not get a long-term deal then. But I think this time around... James Harden gets traded for two first-round picks, two second-round picks, one swap. In the totality of things, that's a lot of assets to give up for just a rental. And I, I think as long as everything goes according to plan, these guys stay healthy, this, the Clippers want this core three of, of Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. They want to build around those three guys, especially going into a new arena, going into the next few years of, of trying to compete in the Western Conference. You want to keep that group together. And when you give up, that type of asset uh, pool with, with, with multiple first, multiple seconds, a swap, that's a lot not to get a long-term deal done. So I do believe going into this, the Clippers have a long-term vision with James Harden. Y'all think that's the plan? I think so. I think we, it's, For the building, it's, the it's, new building. It's a very good trio that are all in their prime, and they all are just focused on winning, right? Besides Kawhi, these guys have been playing for a really long time. I saw a stat yesterday, was, you know, between Russ and PG and James. These are some of the longest centered guys that have played the most games without a championship. And it could very well be their last hurrah on a really good team where they're all capable of going and being that guy on any given night. So I do like it. I, I, think, it's, I think it could really, really work. And again, with the new buzz of the arena, with the Clippers being the little brother of the Lakers, this kind of gives them positive energy and hopes to kind of take that next step and to be a real contender. I did see a tweet. I think Brad Williams has had it out. Um, this is your finals champions of 2014. <laughs> did <you? laughs> I didn't see that. No. It felt like it felt like we were sort of recycling, um, but it also feels weird to say that about this type of talent. Is there a little bit of that though? I, I mean, I find myself going, do they still have it as a group? Can they do it together? I mean, watching Paul George last night, he's got it. Like he is back. Kawhi again, he also looks healthy, and that's been the main concern for these two guys in particular. It's all about health. Now, James, it's it's almost it's a fresh start. You're home. You're from LA. You got your guys. You've played with Russ before. You're from. You're you're cool with these guys off the court. You got what you wanted. Now it's time to produce, and I think he's got the roster to do that. All right, we're gonna sit back and get comfortable for this next one, Lou and I especially because, whew, whatever, Shams. The in-season tournament starts Saturday. Break it down for us. Tell us exactly how this thing is going to work. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to go big picture. Okay. These are really regular season games that have a little bit more incentive. They're going to be played uh, with with different courts. New, new, so I I mean, I'm sure we maybe we have pictures of of all the courts. I mean, these courts are kind of cool. Some are wild. Some are interesting. Some are fun. Uh, but definitely unique. And so new courts, and there will be a $500,000 award for every player on the championship team. There's going to be the final four in Vegas uh, on December 9th, I believe, is when it starts. So this is something that's going to go on over the next month of the season. And and this is a new initiative for the NBA. They want these these regular season games. So they're they're not adding new games. It's really just regular season games, national TV games. They're getting more hype more energy, different courts, different energy around it. And I think they want to you know, have a different level 
uh, of severity around these games. They want to hype these games up and make these games more meaningful at a point in the calendar before Christmas when there's not uh, as, as much to look forward to, maybe on a night-to-night -night basis. But what I will say, for guys like Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, I don't know how impactful playing for an in-season championship is, but I think for this new group of star players, when you think about guys like Trey Young, uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Devin Booker, uh, Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson, like th this, this adds a different part of a legacy potentially to try to go win, to try to be the first or the or the back-to-back in-season tournament champion. We know the Aces, uh, they just won the in-season tournament and the WNBA <laughs> championship a couple years ago. So uh, I think I think there is some positives <laughs> to that. So for the next month, the games that were on the schedule are the games that are on the schedule. They just carry a little more weight and slowly they whittle that down to the last four that then go to Vegas. Is that, so you my, could, you I have could, that right? You could win the in-season tournament but not make the playoffs. Right. Yeah, right. it's, it's a separate 100%. gig. It's yeah. a gimmicky to me. I'm well, just going to say it. Yeah, you're wrong. It's a, it's, a, it's a gimmick to me. But Look, could it be a fun gimmick? I mean, just like, Shams, just like Shams mentioned, the WNBA has been doing it for the last couple of seasons, and the Liberty has won the end-season tournament, and, you know, the Aces win the championship. And I don't think we really, I don't think we really care. I'll say this. As a player, they're, you're hyped for the beginning of the season, right? You're hyped from October to November. It's fresh. You're, you're new. You're, you're trying to prove and get the rotations down. And then there's this period during Christmas where it gets a little <laughs> gloomy and it gets a little boring until All-Star, where you're just looking forward to All-Star weekend, right? You're looking forward to that break. And then post-All-Star break, there's the playoff run, where that's like the most critical part of the season. So I get it. This, this kind of gives that time frame of the schedule m more interest. But again, when you got guys now making $40, $50 million, right. no offense, they, they don't care about the $500,000. Now, the lower paid guys, this is huge. You could be a ninth, 10th, 11th man, not play, and get a half a million dollars for winning this in-season tournament. It's great. And I will say, I didn't like the plan when I first heard about it. I thought the plan was silly, and I'm still not fully sold. But at least I understand it now, and it gives teams more of an opportunity. It gives teams a different situation, a different look where guys can play. And, and so this could be similar to that, but... I'm confused about I just don't care. the like, Vegas part. Is there, there going to be an in-season tournament like MVP? Is this like another thing just I, to we, give a award probably, to? Probably, I would think. But I don't get, like, so you play these games, boom, 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 boom. You get down to the four. Are those additional games? And how does that work into the schedule that already exists? I think the winner exists? plays an extra two games or something so like that. So extra two. And... I, Trust me, the players aren't excited about playing any extra basketball. Even in basketball. Vegas, they, they don't just, want no. I, no. I can't wait till the team is in the championship and then they don't play their star. They don't. They load manage <laughs> during the end season final four. Is that what we're calling it? I guess so. Also, I, just, I don't love it, but we'll see. I we'll just, see how it pans. I feel like it's like we need to see this. First. I'm, I'm all for innovation. I'm all for trying to change the game, trying to do some, but uh, end season tournament play-ins. Like, we got to get back to the basics a little bit. Sean, is that true? So the winner of this tournament will play 84 games? That's correct? I, I, I think it's 83. So I there's an extra one game. Extra game. extra game, okay. And that's $500,000. Yeah, I think it's one extra game for the winner. For, that's interesting. I think, it's, I think I'm going to reserve judgment until I, I see it. I don't it. know if it's incentive enough I'll to Get back to, to me to in change. December. I don't know. The reality is the season is long. Players that's get tired. Um, you're traveling. You're in Minnesota, and it's... 10, <laughs> 10 inches of snow on the ground. You leave in Minnesota, you're going to Salt Lake City. I don't think this changes anything as, as far as the players' mentality. I guess they're thinking the fans will think that the guys are going to play harder and it's going to mean more, so it kind of makes that more. And they're fresh because it's the beginning of the season. I, I don't know. Shams, um, get back to us on, like, December 6th, and then we'll have our <laughs> final judgment on if we like it or not. We will talk to you bright and early tomorrow, sir. Thank you, Shams. I think... Oh, that was nice. Yeah. That was so nice. Uh, Fitter Brick Halloween edition. There were some good ones. There were some great ones, obviously. I mean. This is fire. This, this is, is good. Perfection. You think he knew who Slender Man was? Or do you think somebody's like, you have to do Slender I think someone. The guy doesn't know what churros are yet still. In okay, but that's, that's like a food thing. That's. <laughs> someone someone tipped By the way, all. Charles Barkley calling a churro a long donut is really not <laughs> accurate at all. <laughs> what would you call it? A cinnamon stick? Yeah, like a cinnamon Twirl? pastry. <laughs> this is good, though. By the way, take we off like the mask. You can wear this tonight. It's a fire suit. That's perfect. Oh, uh, this is great. That's actually terrifying. Okay, we 2-0 so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. These are cool. two fits. I can't believe Steve Kerr did this. Wait, what?
Wait, that's Steve. Oh, that's Kerr? Steve Kerr on the yeah, right. Yeah. I thought it was just some fan. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Steve no way, that's Steve Kerr. Is that Steve Kerr? Yeah, it's Steve Kerr. That makes as it Kevin Herter. You think Kevin Herter was like, why me? Like, what? Or do you I, think? No, I'm thinking why him. So yeah, he must be thinking it. The only white guy on the Kings are like, exactly. you know what? I got it. You. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's pretty good. That's, but you know what? That's cheating. That's You brought in a Who's Hollywood that? makeup person. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, spent real money. He's spent $5,000 on this. Beetlejuice. Uh, it's fire, though. You nailed it. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a perfect costume. It's very, very good. Yeah, it is literally out of the movie. <laughs> you cannot beat that. Uh, DeAndre Jordan mm. as Taylor Swift. Come I mean, on. it's funny. That's better than most. It's boots, it's like relevant. That. It's And it's also the way, if you're going to do the, uh, if you're gonna do the easy, lazy one, do it funny. It's a stinker. He did put lipstick on, and I give him extra points for that. That's a stinker. That ain't it. <laughs> That's you don't brick. like it? <laughs> that ain't it. Lou's yeah. not feeling it. Okay, fine then, Lou. You knew it was coming. Someone was going to do it. Yeah, but it's not good. Like DeAndre Jordan. It's good when it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Lou, you're up next. What do you got? Let me see if it's, we'll judge you now harshly. No, that's oh, Chandler. No. Oh, wait, when was that? I don't know, you look oh, mean. No, you, oh. Wait, oh, are so you the mean guy from Karate This Kid? is at like a party. I didn't walk into the arena with, <laughs> with this. Well, you put what it on the you, internet. What, it's ours now. What are you going now. for here, bro? I think I was just a dope just skeleton. A skeleton, yeah. <laughs> dope. Skeletons running. Not really sure. <laughs> yeah. Dope skeleton. You know skeleton. I'm sweaty. You know I stay sweaty. <laughs> We're always sweating. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's not bad. Okay, Lou, it's now me. you're up. Let me see. Oh, that's oh. Good. So who did your makeup? Yeah, so you went all out here. Oh yeah, this was for um, this was for my birthday party. That's really um, good makeup, you know, dude. I always throw throw big parties for my birthday, so this was for my birthday a couple years ago. See, you pick, yeah, but you didn't do it this time. Yeah, you didn't did. You were, oh, you weren't there. Shut. You know what? <laughs> That'll hurt somebody else's feelings. But I'm a hermit. That's so right. You weren't <laughs> you can't there. Hurt it's my crazy. Feelings. It was awesome. <laughs> you can't hurt me at all. Oh, uh, we got another one. Mm, I don't know. I did that. Oh yeah, that's pretty oh, good okay. too. Wow. I don't even think that was for Halloween. Yeah. To be honest with you. <laughs> it's like a night in West Hollywood. I really don't. I think that was. <laughs> That was, so yeah, my What's sister. his name, Gene Simmons? Yeah. yeah. I said that right, right? God, yeah. my, my tongue is one right. third of his. That's not even yeah. fair to pretend. Um, I like that. You know what's a really good goal is to get a Shams photo in a costume. Good That's luck. our goal in life. We'll get Shams it. Shams should be a tech sprint. Yeah. <laughs> Coming <laughs> up next, uh, the latest edition of You Buying That. And we got a new duo in the NBA. When Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. run it up. All the land of the free and the home of the brave of the brave of the brave. Well done. I will never, ever, ever stop loving that with all my heart. Now, we play that because Flavor Flav says that since the anthem that he did before the Bucks game, he's received offers to sing the national anthem from two other teams. Chandler, you buying that? I'm buying it because it's a weird <laughs> lie, right? Like, it's a it, weird lie. <laughs> and it is very entertaining. I think he can just start booking bar mitzvahs and oh. birthdays. I think oh. this is, should be his calling where he can do this because it's obviously horrendous. And it's, but, Excuse me? <laughs> but obviously it is, it's not horrendous. It is co pure comedy, and I loved it. It's Remember the Fergie a couple years ago? That the, was comic. <laughs> that that was, was an insult and an amazing one. <laughs> I don't think he thinks it's called. I think he was really trying. Crying, which makes me love it even more. Right. I'm, listen, I'm buying it. In a, in a world of virality, everybody's <laughs> trying to go viral. I think teams are trying to jump on that boat and get some get some social media love. It's, I'm buying it. It's great for clicks. Definitely buying it. I'm shocked it's not more than two teams. I want him on like The Voice and see if they turn around. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to, so fast. Yeah, I want him to take the next step. <laughs> the next step oh, is I'm The thinking Voice. thinking of The Mask. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm thinking laughs> of. Oh, I love it so much. I hope it. I hope it's a team near us. I would like to see that live and in person. Um, moving on, Willie Green, <clears throat> you know, of the Pelicans, sometimes you gotta remind people, says that Zion and Brandon Ingram are the best duo in the NBA. Lou, you buying that? He ain't say that. I ain't buying that. Well, I didn't make it up. I ain't buying that. I really, really, really like that duo, but until further notice, as long as Jokic and Murray are on the same <laughs> team, breathing. that is the best duo <laughs> in the NBA so far. <laughs> And Kyrie and Luca and Devin and KD 
and there's probably we, three or four. We've seen George enough of the duo for them to be the best duo. Give me Embiid and Maxi over this duo. Like, what are we doing? I agree. He's instilling confidence in them, and but they still have a lot to prove. They haven't won yet. Zion hasn't been healthy enough. I love what he's doing as a co as a player. Man, I'm rolling with him even more after saying this, but. I ain't buying it. I wonder if he was asked it specifically or if he offered it. He just, that, came, that's very he just different. came out swinging and <laughs> saying that. <laughs> I've got something I'd like to share. Yeah, because those are two different messages. I mean, if he was asked it, then you, you have to say that. Tatum and, and Brown? Yeah. We just want to do that. The fact is, it's a bunch of them. It's we need to lot. see more Zion before we, we do that. We'd love to see more Zion. We do want to see that, actually. Yeah. I agree with that. Sure. All right, this next one's good. I have, I'm going to read it because it's a direct quote. Chandler. Jimmy Butler recently said, nobody's going to pick us this year. No one's ever going to pick any team that I'm on, which is great because I don't give an F and I don't like none of y'all anyways. Hmm. <laughs> Are you buying that he doesn't care? That he, oh no, he cares. Yeah, he cares. He cares. And no one's picking them just because a lot of other teams made moves and the Heat didn't. And the Heat lost two critical guys and Gabe Vincent and Max Struess. That's the, and, but this, yeah, this sounds like a, almost a little bit of a pity party. This cool. sounds like, it's like, if you didn't care, you wouldn't say this quote. You know what I mean? So I'm not buying it. You definitely care. You should care, but you definitely care. He cares, right, Lou? It's a lot of caring. It's a lot so. of caring going on. <laughs> too much caring. Yeah, he must care. That's a lot of words if you don't care. Right. Um, I got another quote for Lou, PJ Tucker. He thinks the G League is, quote, the dumbest thing ever, unquote. You buying that? Uh, I would like a sample first, because I'm torn. I'm, okay. I, I'm, I'm torn from, from where it started from to where it is. Um, I, I think they're far off the mission statement, you know? Really? Yeah, I think it began as a real effort to develop young players. Now I feel like um, it's a graveyard for... Um, former players that just want to hoop, that want to find somewhere competitive to play and mm. quite possibly get back in the NBA. And then when it comes to the young guys, I feel like um, it's just a necessary stop for them to get to the big stage because those are the rules. And so, and, and then, uh, and, and I'm torn because there's also, um, it's been some bright moments come out of the, come out of the G League. You yeah. know, some guys have actually made it work into um, an opportunity to play on a big stage. And so, uh, I'm torn. I love the idea of the G League, but like Lou said, if I'm a young player and I'm a first round draft pick, it's almost a bad thing, right? I'm almost embarrassed to go down to the G League and have to play, and it's almost like it's an insult if you get sent hmm. down there. Uh, again, I like the development of it. I love the affiliation to the teams and how close they are, and they almost run the same offense, so you can kind of just plug and play a guy in there. But the salaries are offensive. The schedule and the travel is offensive. Like so, it's it's the cities. You know, we have the a thing cities. With cities. My God, I don't even know where half of them are. They're just words on a map. I know map. Austin. That's yeah, good. there's a good, maybe there's a couple good ones, I guess. But like, yeah, they, they, they don't make it. Like, I would rather go play on Real Madrid for three million mm -hmm. euros than go to Delaware and play on some G League team. Three so million I, euros. That's a nice touch. I like yeah, that. I mean, like, classy. So I get what he's saying by that, but also there are some good pros to development, to being in your system, to having your coach, your front office, watch you every single game and, you know, kind of just. Like you're on the radar. You're on, the you are the radar. That's yeah. the reason they have the whole infrastructure of the league. But I agree, it is kind of a, you know, it's a Debbie Downer. If I got the call that I was going to the G League, I would, I almost wouldn't, would tell, I wouldn't tell people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a negative insane. thing to go down there, and which hopefully that some changes. Some guys just aren't good enough. Yeah. And that's okay to not be good enough. So we, we, we don't need a subsidiary for them to feel like they're almost there. They're almost like a participa participation. It's like that's the MLB. Right. There's so many different yeah. leagues. Yeah, this, at least there's just one league for this, right? The, the AAA, double A's. You it's know the what I mean? feeder, yeah. That's um, too much. Paul Pierce said some stuff. Said that the new generation of players Heals slower than we did. <laughs> Taylor, that's medicine. <laughs> you buying that? What's he, Neil Elitrosh, all of a sudden? Come on, P. No, I'm not buying that. You got, you got wheeled <laughs> out to go take a dump, <laughs> P. Don't do you that. You literally shit your pants that. and got wheeled off the, off on, the court. <laughs> no, I'm not buying it. Listen, injuries are injuries. That's just medical. That's science. It's science. This doesn't, yeah, this doesn't make much sense. I agree uh. that the older guys, they think the new age guys are softer and this whole load management thing, but... The idea of, of our <laughs> bodies, I think it's the opposite. We have so many resources now to I help do. us heal quicker and sooner. 
Uh, and I, they get you get to heal better now because they fix things quicker. Yeah, you could have a surgery and come back stronger now. You had a surgery, the same surgery back in the day. Your yeah. your career is over. Look at this finger. Does that look like yeah. it healed right? Oh dear. Exactly. We've, heard so many, we've heard so many stories of older players. Where'd you put like, that thing? <laughs> <laughs> We've, heard, we've yeah. heard so many stories about older players saying, well, the team rushed me back. It's because yeah. they didn't have the science and they didn't have the technology. Yeah, they didn't have and they PRP. They didn't, right. they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have any of this advanced, cutting-edge stuff that we have. So, no, I'm not buying it. We actually, great quote. We, like, I didn't heal ever. But these two guys, they heal quicker. <laughs> still trying to heal yeah, now. still not healed. <laughs> um, this next one, oh, I feel this one in my bones. Joel Embiid was fined 35 grand for his... <laughs> Boom! D Generation X celebration. I love it. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> worth it, right, guys? <laughs> you can tell Lou. You can tell Lou just seeing that for the first time right now. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, hey, man. Uh, hey, money well spent, Joel. Uh, I love it. On the fourth or third game, he went suck it to his own crowd. Was that a home game? I think it, wait, was that a home game? Run it, it was, back. wasn't it? Oh, I think it was, it was a home game. Dude, Who's honestly. Who's that, too? Oh, oh, no. Yes, it's that's like in that Philly. So it's good. full on Triple H heartbreak. There's kid. his ex pot. He, <laughs> he did this I last am, year, too, right? But they didn't I hit him with the phone. buying. Fire. This is money well spent. Spent. Wait, yes. so Triple H did reach out, right? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I know a place where you can do that all day. Jo Joel transforming into this Logan Paul WWE star would oh, be something after My goodness. Hey, listen, he just, listen, so am I buying? Yes. He spent 35K and just got invited to WrestleMania in Philly, and I guarantee you they will pay for his present. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is done. Yes, it's a brilliant move. Well done, Joel. Well, well done. Yeah. Taking a break. When we come back, we got some picks, some things, some stuff to make you richer when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it back to the future. Time to uh, predict. What's going to happen? So you guys both, before the season started, a long, long time ago, uh, picked Tatum as your MVPs. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other guys who have a chance at this. And now when we look at this, just know that Tatum, Jokic, and Doncic are not on it. They are the top three favorites with odds. But this is the remaining. What do you have, SGA-wise? You do love him, Lou. I do. And I'm, I'm going to double down on it. For him to be the MVP, I think he has to will that team to be and a fully loaded West, a top three team, mm. and average between, I say, 27 and 30. That, give, that puts him in the conversation. Okay, wow. That's a, that's a hard list. Anthony Davis is down there. I mean, it would be a nice payout. Honestly, with those odds, I love the Anthony Davis pick. I think the Lakers have a solid team this year. I think if they stay healthy, they can be in that home court advantage type scenario where they can be playing longer in the season. And again, we I never understand what the voting is. Is it, is it individual stats? Is it because mm. the team? It feels like it switches every single year. <laughs> but I like Anthony Davis because, again, he's going to put up good numbers. He, the media is going to be on his head all year long. He's going to continue to have to prove them wrong. And the Lakers are going to win a lot of games. So I love, at those odds, plus 3,100. Right? I love Anthony Davis. Almost worth just doing just that. Throw, just throw a little something on it. Just like a couple bucks on that. Anybody else on there you think maybe just might shock the world? Um, Devin yeah, Devin Booker's Devin a good one. Kevin Durant's a good I mean, one. I want to see him play. I mean, they're, all, they're on there for a reason. I don't think, I think Joel, I don't see, I don't see the back-to-back -back no. happening for the big cat. No, if anything, they do Jokic again, just to sort of, it's just going to go mm -hmm. back and forth from them. Uh, man, we got through a show, guys. One more left in the week. John Wall joins us tomorrow on the show. That should be fun. Um, Wall way. There you go. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. We will be back bright and early tomorrow. Enjoy your Wednesdays and uh, some baseball tonight. That might be over. Mm. Run it back, run it back, run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back like a running back. Yeah. She knowing all